Welcome to the Broadcast Exchange, a new interview series from Newscast Studio, the trade publication for broadcast production. This week we chat with JP Lamonico of CBS Sports, which is fresh off of Super Bowl 55. JP heads the network's graphic and design team, and in our conversation we discuss how the design for the Super Bowl came together along with the augmented reality that was used. As well, we talk about the fresh design you'll be seeing on CBS Sports later this year and the NCAA tournament. We're talking today about the Super Bowl and the overall uh, new direction that CBS Sports is heading with its on-air look. So talk a little bit about uh, what all's going on at CBS Sports. Um, lot, lots is happening at, uh, at CBS Sports. Um, as you know, we just did the Super Bowl last Sunday, and um, that was a culmination of a year's worth of work, um, just thought and planning and uh, a little bit of juggling along the way. So uh you know in a normal super bowl year uh from the day the previous super bowl ends we we everybody huddles together and and the planning begins and it's fairly normal it's you know usually there's either a major upgrade to our graphics at that point or sometimes a redesign uh in 2016 we did a massive overhaul rebrand of of the division um and then at 53, which was a few, you know, three years later, we, we just kind of did an upgrade. We massaged the look. Um, for 55, uh, we assumed we'd be doing a rebrand or our own sort of bigger redesign. Uh, and then along the way, um, Mike Benson and, and CBS Network uh, informed us that they were going to do this overall rebrand of the entirety of, of CBS, which uh, a was amazing because no one's ever really done that before. The, the CBS has always sort of had autonomous yeah. islands of, of design across its divisions. Uh, so the, the idea of this scope of project was, was awesome to me. Um, but then also started to drive our thinking for the Super Bowl. So um so our, our our focus for the redesign or the rebrand at the Super Bowl uh, was now heavily influenced by the bigger rebrand. We were sort of a rebrand within a rebrand at that point, um, and it was great. You know, we we had a sort of parallel conversations with with uh, you know CBS Network and and what we were doing with the division while internally sort of crafting our own uh, personality within that design, and then obviously trying to elevate everything, you know, because it's the Super Bowl, because, you know, a hundred million people will be watching and, and you've got to put on, you know, your best outfit that day. So, um, so that's, that's what we did. And I think, uh, you know, the way it came out and the way it, uh, sort of all these sort of random ingredients coming together and, and us kind of like molding them into a singular look uh, was really successful. And I think that was evidenced on air uh, this past Sunday. So kind of deconstructing it and, and going back first to that 10,000 foot view, um, talk a little bit about the overall process that CBS Sports is doing to kind of integrate the new CBS you know, brand mandate into the overall look, you know, beyond just, you know, obviously there's the new logos that have hit CBS Sports, CBS Sports Network, CBS Sports at, at HQ, um, how we're going to keep seeing that filtering down and then kind of talk about uh, a little bit about the insert graphics and kind of what all's next. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, really, really good question because um, CBS Sports, uh, that, that rebrand that I sort of touched on in 2016 was a really um, a really pointed rebrand. It was it was very strongly formatted uh, and we we lived by that format uh, mm -hmm. rather religiously for five years. Uh, something that we sort of, you know, sort of mandated throughout the, the division, throughout the company, uh, and we stayed true to it. So it, by the time uh, this rebrand was introduced to us, you know, we felt like we were, you know, a brand takes a long time to build, right? Yeah. So we felt like we were hitting a really good stride and we were strong in all aspects. And then sort of like this, hey, guys, by the way, we're going to throw all that out and we're going we're gonna to do something new. Um, was was tough to sort of swallow at first and, and it was a little bit of a bitter pill and then um and then when we saw that a we were uh welcomed and involved in the process um as as a group uh that was really great and then when we saw the sensibilities and the and the the path that that 
Mike and his team wanted to go down, uh, it wasn't a far reach from where we were. Uh, they weren't going to get, we, we had a pretty structured, simple, uh, elegant, sophisticated kind of approach to our graphics. Um, and they were embracing those same sensibilities, albeit a little bit different for us. Um, but, but we were already there in the mindset at least. So, so that was a big plus for us. Um, obviously we see the logo system across everybody. And, uh, for us, it was basically removing a box. I mean, other than that, it's pretty much a very similar styled logo system, very similar font. Um, to that point, the unification of a font across all divisions was, I mean, it seems like such a small thing, but it's massive. And it's yeah. it, you just recognize instantly, right? There's instant recognition of, oh, that's a CBS thing now. Um, so so knowing that we could sort of move along that 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 same path with them and, and we kind of knew a lot of the answers that, that were in front of us because we've already, we had already been through it uh, was really good. And then, um, and then the design style that they introduced, that was a little bit tougher for us. Uh, we had gone from a very sort of circular motif in our, in our look prior to 2016 mm -hmm. to kind of throwing it out. We went full linear boxes, rectangles, uh, 3d extruded shapes and, uh, and, and, the design style now is what we call elemental and meaning it's the elements of the eye drive the design, which we all know the eye is a big circle. So we were, for us, it was like, it was a little bit of a, like, Oh, here we go. We're just taking a huge step back and, uh, and going back to where we came from. But uh, you know, and all the, all the kudos to my team and, and the people we worked with on this, you know, I, I kind of grouped a small uh, huddle together at the beginning of this and said, Hey, listen, we really don't want to go back to circles. I mean, I get it. We, we have to at some point, but I want you guys to take a look at the eye and find out how to not make it into big circles all over again. So, you know, they all looked at me like I was nuts and then they kind of went away and thought about it for a little while. So, um, and I think what we came back with was a nice balance. I mean, we can't obviously avoid the circles, but I think we took uh, an interesting perspective on how we portray them on the screen. So, uh, so yeah, so that's a little bit of a deconstruction of, of what the method was. So for like the Masters, which is coming up uh, the spring in the NCAA tournament, how much of what we saw at the Super Bowl will translate into those insert graphics? You know, obviously minus the sand and the, uh, the beach <laughs> inspiration. Right. So that's a, that's a super interesting question. And it's a little bit of insight into CBS sports as a whole and, and kind of what, who we are on a yearly basis you know, as we go through our season. So those two properties you just mentioned, the tournament and then the masters, um, they, they're sort of outside of the umbrella of, of the brand look. Um, they carry, they're very significant, properties uh one being that with march madness and, and the tournament we are um partnered up with with turner um and and it's a joint venture from that perspective so that it's not just a cbs property so there is a unique look that is solely uh the tournaments um however there was a, a brand new launch of a of a graphics look that we worked on for the previous year leading up to just ahead of the covid uh pandemic yeah that never saw the light of day last year. We never got to uh, sort of pull the trigger on that. So uh, so we got a new launch this year. Uh, and so while it won't be, you know, the um, what we would called the NCAA training facility, the concrete walls and, and dark uh, hallways, uh, we brightened it up a ton. And it's a super fan centric, really fun. You know, we tried to capture the energy of the tournament. Um, and, and I think you'll see that when, when that, pro, uh, that package launches this year. And then we go to the Masters, and the Masters is, is unto itself. It is its own uh, entity. It doesn't belong with our PGA Tour golf uh, events. It doesn't even belong in, with the PGA Championship. It is, uh, it is a standalone. So uh, that, again, will, will not change. It will be uh, the same package that we, we launched uh, two years ago when, uh, when Tiger won. So, um, so those two things will be, will be, you know, as they are, uh, or, or their own thing. And then actually to, to the point, I think you're trying to make here, 
we are going to be in our current package, which was the pre Super Bowl package design wise, um, until we get to uh, our first big event in August. So we're taking the off season for us, the quote unquote off season, which is post Masters, and uh, everybody's you know nose to the grindstone. We're gonna you know gather together and change over the entirety of of our look, which includes all studio shows, all events, all regular season um, packages, whether they're, they're remote or in, in, in studio. So uh, so there's a lot of work ahead of us, but but the Super Bowl was definitely a great peek at, at where we're gonna land. CBS Sports HQ has already kind of updated a lot of their their look, at least to kind of give them some, some taste of, of maybe the new direction as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we work, uh, so Como Buchenwald is uh, our art director, and, and she and I work very closely with the um, the HQ guys. Um, and yeah, we were we were luckily to be a, a good part of that conversation, and, and they uh, were happy to sort of follow our lead and, and take our advice on things. So yeah, so we kind of hustled with them and and got this this launch with them the week prior to Super Bowl. So uh, I think there's still more to come to with that. You know, a little bit of a work in progress. It's a fluid situation over there. But yeah, they they got to uh, a really strong foothold of, of where they're going to be, just like we did with Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I just got off another conversation, and you know, the the phrase of the year right now is rapid iteration. I think all broadcasters, um, whether it's their looks, whether it's technology stacks, everyone is is unafraid to try new things and to rapidly change them if it's not working. You know, we've seen that at the national newscast, we've seen that on the cable networks. Um, it's just everyone is a lot more willing to do that than maybe they were ten years ago. Yeah. I think, I mean, that speaks to technology, right? I mean, we have the ability. And again, you know, I think when, when we speak as, as a graphics department, it's like, we don't, we don't want people to think that way. Uh, you know, they're because we can do it doesn't mean we should yeah. do it. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the technology allows you to pivot and definitely upgrade and, and, and change some things in a, in a quick way. Um, but however, I don't recommend that. I think, you know, uh, you know, what we hope is that that we're in front of things and then we're being thoughtful and, and kind of, you know, putting a, a strong design together with with reason and meaning. Um, and it's not just, you know, eye candy on the screen. There, there's definitely some logic underneath. I say usually in the graphics world, when you have to rapidly iterate, it's because a few too many fans are saying something on social yeah, 100%, media. 100%. Uh, like, I mean, like we saw with uh, Monday Night Football. <laughs> Wasn't going to say it out loud myself, but yeah, I was amazed. I was honestly amazed watching that night and just seeing the flurry. I mean, it was just, it was nuts. And then to see the change on air uh, at the second half was, I was like, this is a bad precedent in my mind. I, I talked with someone at ESPN a couple of weeks ago as well. And they were talking about how when they designed the new college football look that they had to focus group the score bug and they had to you know go through the extra levels just yeah. to make sure that that same kind of thing didn't happen again and then you know with you all in the super bowl you know the score bug yeah. it still captured some of the old but it was still very fluid very clean very very readable um you know uh, compared to some of the other ones out there that are very you know a, you yeah. a little showy compared to maybe their intended audience so a handful of things i mean about we and knowing us knowing kind of going in right that that is it. The, we can design the greatest opens and the nicest AR, but if the score bug doesn't fly, uh, <laughs> which you know we affectionately call the I bar in in CBS, yep. um, but yeah, if that doesn't fly, then you know all our heads are on a plate, right? So, so there's a lot of thought that goes into that and a lot of pressure testing, and uh, you know I. I try not to look at any social media, but but the little the few things that people shared with me, I was happy to see that people appreciated the change. Um, there were a couple of really great things that went into that. Um, one being that we didn't stray too far from the design, as you mentioned. I mean, we we have something that works. We have a configuration that is yeah. solid and and makes sense. Um, so we didn't want to leave that. Um, what we did do is remove. We removed a little extra framing, right? We took the borders off. We took the dividers out. We just further simplified, right? And just 
a little bit of less is more when it came to the IBAR. Um, the other thing that was a, a benefit to us in to go two steps back to the, the global rebrand of CBS, um, TT Norms, the, the, the font that, that we've adopted as a group uh, is just an amazing typeface for, for that usage. I, I thought, you know, in, in and it's retrospect, from, from the foundry uh, true type. Yep, exactly. And it, in there. It, it could, um, you know, although we kept the eye bar exactly the same size, and I, I thought there were some interesting reactions that people thought we made it much bigger. Uh, it is literally the exact same footprint as the previous one with a little less busyness. So I think it appears bigger, but also that font, that font can read at probably at three quarters of its size, right? And still feel present on the screen. So, mm -hmm. so there's some flexibility there, I think that we can think about. Um, but yeah, I thought the eye bar was incredibly successful and, um, and looked really, really sharp on the screen. Yeah, I mean, and not to bounce around, but to talk about that flexibility and the scaling, you know, for the PGA Tour, you know, you introduced the new uh, on-screen ticker or, you know, score box, yeah. the always present. That is uh, at a very small size compared to, say, uh, the, the eye bar on football, but it's still right. very, very legible. And there's, to me, there's a balance to that, right? So it's, you know, especially with what we did, we call that the constant leaderboard that now lives above the bug. And, and it's interesting if, if you're a golf fan, I'm a huge golf fan. I was a golf fan before I worked in sports, but um, if you're a golf fan, knowing, knowing that information, although it seems sort of like, Oh, well, you'll get that when you go to break or whatever, and they show a leaderboard, knowing that sort of one you're watching is super relevant to, to what you're seeing, right. And what you're sort of, rooting for or rooting against or whatever, depending on who, who your guy is. Um, but the balance of that constant leaderboard is that it is a very, um, it's a very light and very um, sort of unobtrusive design, but mm -hmm. it's, it's time on the screen gives it weight, right? So it's like, you don't need to design something big because you're going to have all day to sort of absorb it. And then you'll find that eventually because of the way it's designed, you kind of take it or leave it. It doesn't intrude on on you watching uh, the event. So I think, again, another huge success is launching golf this year. It was almost like a, a pre-Super Bowl to the Super Bowl. But, uh, you know, we're super happy with with what the results of, of that launch in San Diego did for us. And, and pivoting back to the Super Bowl, you know, so so uh, you all incorporated a lot of AR this year. You know, obviously the Super Bowl is when any broadcaster kind of brings out some new techniques, some new toys. Uh, you know, they glam it up because it is the world stage. Yep. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, your unique AR opening sequence you had um, with the motion capture and, and what all that entailed. So what we try and do is, and I think the NFL does this as well, is like what, what, wherever the city is, whatever the the sort of flavor of that Super Bowl is based on its location. Um, the NFL develops a style guide. And, and this year, um, we really loved sort of their, their motto or their sort of uh, mantra for the Super Bowl, which was, uh, you know, it was uh, sea, sand, and siege. And that, that was sort of the, the approach. It was a very colorful, very dramatic approach to sort of that buccaneer pirate motif of, that Tampa Bay gives off. So uh, right away, you know, brainstorming, we did an AR open at 53. So we wanted to keep the momentum and keep working in that space. Um, we started dreaming up like the particles, right away, the particles all come into your head and you're like, how am I going to use these? What am I going to do? Uh, and so we, we worked with a company called Silver Spoon that I think you're familiar with. They did the virtual fans for baseball. Um, we had worked with them previously on some projects for, motion capture, great team. Um, so we brought Silver Spoon in to be our partners with the AR um, using a Pixitope system and um, and then also partnering up with the NCAM and SMT to, to do the tracking. But uh, lots of work there, you know, tons of discussion. Obviously, it's an incredibly technical uh, venture to go, go down that path. And, you know, for something that's, you know, 10 seconds or 15 seconds on the screen, there's about 30 people behind the scenes, all sort of choreographed and, and making that happen. Um, you know, it, the undertaking of that was, was it paid off 
And it was maybe the most exciting part of the day for us. And it's also our first sort of leap, no pun intended, right out of the beginning of the game. Uh, But yeah, our Sandman and our our cannons fired off the uh, pirate ship in Tampa Stadium. All that was really, really fun. And uh, what a great way to introduce uh, a little bit of high-end technology. Uh, The Unreal Engine driving those graphics uh, was the only way that we could have accomplished that. I mean, nothing else has that kind of power in a real time type environment, you know, just so we're all clear. Cause sometimes it's hard to tell cause everybody's so good at their job, the sky cam operator, the tracking, everything's so good. You know, you're not really sure if it's live, but that was a hundred percent, you know, roll sky cam and let's go. And that, that graphic was executed live on the air as were all the other ones that you saw throughout the day. But um, yeah, it's very exciting to do. Now, you know, you, you brought up earlier the the point that CBS has been in a privileged position to have two Super Bowls so close together due to some scheduling maneuvers on NBC yeah. and CBS's part. Did that add any pressure? Did that change things since you all, you know, were just the Super Bowl host broadcaster a few years back and now you have to kind of iterate very, very quickly? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it was interesting because uh, because of those shifts and changes, uh, you know, for for those who haven't done a Super Bowl, when you are done that with that one year sort of labor of love of, of getting that on the air, you're happy there's a three year break before you're doing it again. <laughs> um, so when we did this in two years, and which is effectively you know one year, one year off, um, and then a year of working again on that that next Super Bowl. Um, it was definitely a scramble. You know, it was like, it, it's not a lot of downtime, not a lot of time to think. There's a lot of, um, you know, for us, it's constant moving parts. We, we mm-hmm. operate on a weekly basis throughout the year, putting on huge events. So, uh, so there was a little bit of a scramble, but, um, but we were excited. You know, it's always great to have that, that massive event on your air. Um, then COVID got introduced <laughs> And, you know, then we had question marks all over the place. We we didn't know if, you know, what that Super Bowl would look like. You know, we we knew it wasn't going to be traditional or normal in any sense of the word. But, uh, you know, so that sort of, that just, you know, slowed plans down because there was a lot of like, we're not sure, we're kind of waiting and seeing, you know, we don't know what we're waiting and seeing about, but we were waiting and seeing like in the early part of the year to kind of get a feel for what we'd be working with. Uh, and then once we were a go, you know, we assembled a really great team. And uh, that's one thing I just want to talk about real quick is just we as an internal department uh, took a very different approach to how we got this done. Um, the people involved uh, were from all different walks of life. Normally, you know, you kind of go, you, you, you hire a big third party company. They kind of, you know, take the reins on that and, you know, you work with them and collaborate but um, but it's basically it's a singular sort of outlet for for what you're doing, um, and again I, I mentioned Como earlier and 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 then my internal team uh, Drew Simon, Tara Kafer, Peter Rizzo, um, Mark Di Francesco for our, our insert design. We each kind of like powwowed and and we found some some smaller groups that we like. Uh, we hired a a freelance artist uh, named Marcos Vaz, who's got a history in this industry of, you know, just a reputation of doing the greatest work. And I've been a fan since forever. Um, so we reached out to see if he had any availability. And he, you know, earlier, he was the one I kind of said, hey, here's this eyeball. Can you like turn it into straight lines? <laughs> um, and he took that challenge. He came back with some style frames that really drove the entirety of this, of this package. Um, real home run, just really beautiful work. And I, you know, it wasn't, wasn't surprised even a little bit with what he came back with. He's so talented. Uh, and then he, you know, we worked with Marcos uh, throughout the package and, and a company named uh, Two Fresh out in LA. Um, and so they were one group and then we had Northern Lights in the city, uh, another design house working on some other pieces. And then um, Academy of Lower Thirds helping us out with some of the inserts. So it was a real, sort of potpourri of like uh of people you know working on on uh sort of lanes you know and sections of the super bowl and that was kind of driven what i really was proud of is driven by my internal team 
So for maybe the first time ever, it was like really an internal job with, with outside help versus like an outside job where we just kind of mm-hmm. put some things in. Uh, the collaboration at that level was was amazing, and I, I the process for as tight as a, the calendar schedule was, uh, to me felt I felt never felt uncomfortable. You know, it was just the ideas were all coming quick. There's a lot to make, but you know, people buckled down and got it done, and you know, it was a you know, it was a job of passion for a lot of them, and and it showed, I think. So. Uh... In terms of what to look for for the year ahead, what would you say would be the the biggest trends we should be watching for on CBS Sports? Um. So what for the year ahead? You know, we will look to August, right? And uh, our first new telecast of uh, of this package. You know, and again, I think you know we the Super Bowl was a, a microcosm of the bigger package, mm-hmm. but there's still so many things to figure out. Um, that we will be doing in the off season, things we may add, things we have to explore. You know, there are elements of this design that work great for football, but you know, we still have to explore what what does it mean for basketball. And then uh, just another huge calendar moment for us this year is we're going to launch um, SRX Auto Racing in uh, July, which we need to start on, but. Um, <laughs> But, you know, it's going to be heavily informed by by what we did, you know, uh, last weekend. It's 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 a part of the family now. And, and it's got, you know, I'm excited to work on it. I just think, you know, the opportunities with with auto racing and, and graphics, it, you know, I think the, the sky's the limit on that. We can we can have fun all day with, uh, you know, new technology, AR and graphics and, you know, just data driven graphics and things like that. So there's a lot of stories to tell there. Um, yeah, I mean, what Tony Stewart and his, and his team are doing with uh, bringing data into the sport, you know, I, I used to actually work in, in NASCAR as a photographer and, and know a lot of these guys and, you know, what they've been able to do in such a short time frame yeah. and then to add the data layer on top of it, yeah, you know, it's going to hopefully make for a, a different type of telecast than just the standard cars around a track. Here's a little ticker, you know, you type presentation. I, yeah. And I don't, I, you know, I'm no auto racing guy, uh, but I've had a lot of conversations with, with, uh, our producer for that, Pam Miller, and, and she obviously is like, you know, lives and breathes auto racing. Um, and just the few conversations I had, I'm like super excited to be involved in this. But but you're right, it's it's uh, what they've done. You know, the shortened time frames, the the immediacy of the races, mm-hmm. as opposed to something that you really have to kind of commit to. Uh, the fact that the prime time and the Saturdays and summer, like, there's just so many. Okay. good points about this that it's exciting you know they're building their own cars uh so it's it's going to be interesting there's a, a lot of cool things i think around the corner for that so yeah i can't wait to jump in on that well on that note thanks for taking some time to chat with us today and we'll look forward to seeing more of the new cbs sports uh, graphics as they roll out i appreciate it Dak. thank you thank you for reaching out and talking to me about this uh you know just really proud of what the team's done.